right, welcome back to the Melbourne Strength Culture YouTube channel. So today I'm gonna to be talking about the three factors that affect strength. So it's important to know that with today's video, we're gonna be talking purely about the factors that you can control and actually make yourself stronger. There are some factors that are genetic that we don't really have control over. Anthropometry, pination angle of the muscle and where the muscles origin and insert will also affect strength. So let's head over to the whiteboard. I'm gonna break down some research before we get started. So in order to understand today's video first, we're gonna break out some research done by Schoenfeld et al, 2014, on whether high load uh, resistance training or moderate load resistance training was better for muscle gain and strength gains. And this will help us understand the factors that affect strength a little bit better. So in this study, we had 20 trained men over an eight week training program. We had one group that performed three by 10 repetitions and one group that performed seven by three repetitions. These sets were all conducted at max effort, so to failure. So it's quite challenging and quite hard compared to normal training. What we found in this study was that the same increase in muscle thickness was seen in both groups. However, the important thing to note was that there was significantly greater strength improvements in the group that did the seven by three sets, showing us that heavy loads are better for strength training. So why is this the case? There are three main factors that affect strength. Muscle size, neurological adaptations and skill. Strength is a skill. So that's the first thing we're gonna to touch on. In order to lift heavy loads, you must practice lifting heavy loads. Now there's a fine balance between strength being a skill and practicing the movement of say a barbell back squat and also practicing it heavy enough to get those adaptations required to lift heavy loads and the psychological adaptations of being confident enough to lift those heavy loads. Strength is specific to a rep range and movement. You can't spend your, your time perfecting the skill of the squat by doing sets of 15 reps or 20 reps at lower intensities. There needs to be an element of specificity to a rep range. Strength is best shown to improve in the rep ranges of one to six reps, as shown in the Schoenfeld study that we've just spoken about. This study showed that the high load resistance training of three repetitions had a greater improvement in one RM strength. This means your training should be focused on lifting heavy whilst also improving your skill execution. It's not just about how heavy you can lift and how much training volume you can get in, but how much practice you get with those loads. The alternatives are lifting too heavy and not allowing for adequate skill execution or lifting too light, which may allow for greater skill development, but very little strength development. So the second factor that affects strength greatly is muscle size. Now, obviously the bigger a muscle is, the larger the cross-sectional area of that muscle, the greater amount of force it can potentially produce. So eventually you'll get to a point with your training where the only way to get stronger is by building more muscle. And this is pretty evident if you look across uh, most of the top uh, powerlifting federations, most of the guys are pretty damn jacked. So when it comes to understanding the specific rep ranges that we should be training in for hypertrophy, we're lucky enough that Greg Knuckles has already broken this down for us in his article, Rep Ranges, Fact or Fiction, which Donnie will overlay now. <laughs> I don't need to say that. But yeah, we'll make it, you'll make it work. Overlay it here though, you gotta overlay it there. The analogy that I like to use when it comes to muscle and greater muscle size for skill acquisition and skill development is thinking of driving cars. If you have a V6 car, no matter how great the driver is of the car, no matter how, how well their skill is developed at driving the car, their potential to go a certain speed is capped by the engine of the car. Eventually they need to just get a bigger, more powerful car and go to a V8 car, and then they can go even faster. This is the same with our muscles. Eventually you'll need to spend time getting bigger in order to get stronger. Now, some of the things that we've learned from this study is that yes, we saw greater strength improvement in the 1RM strength in the heavier sets, but some of the limiting factors of this group was that they reported their sessions were four times longer. Now, this is not always great for individuals as some people don't have hours upon hours to train. So this means that we probably wanna vary our rep ranges when it comes to strength development so that we do have some higher intensity work, but then we also train in the rep ranges of six to 15 reps as well. So yes, we saw greater improvement in strength levels in this group, but that doesn't mean that all your training should be just heavy loads. You may wanna split your training up and do some heavy loads, a heavy top set with higher rep back off sets. You need to make sure your rep ranges are varied to get the most out of your training. This will ensure that we not only improve our skill level, but also our muscle size across time as we accumulate volume over the years of training. 
So the third factor and the last factor that can affect, greatly affect our strength is the neuromuscular adaptations. So if we think about our body, without our nervous system, it would literally just be a slab of meat. It'd be useless and wouldn't be able to do anything. So our nervous system will recruit the motor units of the muscles to, in order for them to produce force. And this is why we can overcome heavy loads when we're performing, say, a deadlift or a squat. So in order to understand this a little bit better, we need to understand Henman's size principle of motor unit recruitment. So our body will always recruit the smallest motor units first and then progressively recruit the larger motor units as it needs. It wants to take the path of least resistance. If it can do less work to get the same result, it will. We can recruit motor units in three ways. We can either move something fast, move something heavy, or move something to fatigue. Now, in order for strength and hypertrophy, we pretty much focus on all three, but we bias definitely towards heavier loads while also moving things somewhat to fatigue. And that is where RPE training comes in. The results of the study clearly show us that we need to lift heavy loads. And this is largely part of the neuro, neuromuscular adaptations required to produce force and also for the skill development that we said was the first factor. It's the neurological system that recruits and activates our muscles to allow us to express strength. Neuromuscular adaptations to heavier loading allows contractions to be more forceful and efficient. This means that we can use more of the full potential of our existing muscle mass. So if you take anything away from today's video, these last points are the most important. Strength is affected by muscle size. The greater the size of the muscle, the more potential it has to produce force. Neuromuscular adaptations are what are able to control our muscle and create forceful contractions and that strength and training is also a skill and so that as well as lifting just heavy loads we need to improve skill development as well and skill execution so if you like today's video please leave a comment below give it a thumbs up if you've got any videos or ideas that you want us to make in the coming weeks let us know and as always happy lifting happy chicken soup <laughs>